Well, good morning, everybody that is watching this, uh, most likely via our YouTube channel or on our Facebook page um, after the fact, because uh, we don't have any attendees this morning. It's going to be a little bit easier to run through the uh, House of Rules of Zoom. But uh, kia ora tato to all of those that uh, are watching about our draft um, reserve management plan. So uh, we'll just kick right off. We'll, we won't worry about the rules so much um, or the Q&A function. Um, but if you do have questions after you've watched this recording, please don't hesitate to contact myself or any one of the councillors. So I'm Mayor Toby Adams, um, and I'll let the rest of the panel introduce themselves. I'm Paul Milner, Deputy Mayor. <clears throat> And Ruth Spicer, and the Manaki Toyota Chair and the Wahi Ward Chair. Yeah, good morning to you all, Ross Harris, Ward Chair, Plains. So we're going to run through a bit about what our draft reserve management plan means, um, how you can provide some feedback, um, some questions that we've had emailed into us, uh, and then uh, just how the process goes from here. So we'll start off. So uh, I'll hand over to Deputy Mayor Paul Milner. Thank you. So the co for today's webinar is on the screen now. So it's an overview of what we're consulting on and how we've reached this point so far. What's new in our draft plan? What's the timeline for receiving feedback and then adopting the plan? How to provide that feedback and your questions and discussion. And we've, as the Mayor said, we've got some questions that have been sent through. So we'll endeavour to answer those today as well. Yeah, thank you, Paul. What's a reserve management plan? It provides a guideline for what can happen on parks and reserves into the future. It sets out our level of maintenance and any development intentions for each park and reserve. It allows us to protect and enable people to enjoy the district's parks and reserves. And very importantly, it is required under the Reserves Act 1977. So we're reviewing this plan because it was originally prepared in 2006 and at that time it was absolutely fit for purpose. What we want to do is ensure that it's going to be right now and for the next 10 years. We also want to ensure that we work constructively with Māori to ensure a Horaki Māori lens is incorporated into the plan. And we have new reserves that need to be added as well, as well as new policies, plans and strategies. And during 2021, we, we spent a lot of time uh, working with key stakeholders and we had a, a good collaborative approach with Iwi. Uh, we met with representatives from Ngāti Tara Tokunui, Taharua Marae, Ngāti Hako, Ngāti Whananga and Ngāti Power, as well as the Kai Whakarite who is affiliated to Ngāti Tara Tokunui and Ngāti Tamatara. We also had other pre-consultation meetings with the community and we've got the results from our annual satisfaction survey, which in which 500 residents took part. What's new? He aha to me a ho. So in 2006, we had 56 reserves in our plan, and we're pro proposing to have 78 this time around. So 22 are new. 25 in the Pyra Award, four of which are new. 31 in the Plains Ward, including the Fotikawa Coast. 16 are new, and that's a large number because of the. Auckland Council super city change in which we got many parks and reserves from the Franklin area. And in the Waihi Ward, there'll be a total of 22 with two new ones. So continuing on that uh, trend, so the changes to reflect the current and anticipated trends in the reserve use and management. So the district's population is growing. Uh, we've seen it growing and it's also aging. But uh, rangatahi participation and active recreation declines at around age 15. So we want to work on that. Overall, more interest in casual activities like walking, biking, and less of those that are in those organised sports. These trends affect the type of facilities we will need in the future, so we'll need to do some more planning around encouraging rangatahi to continue participating in physical activity. As a council, we've also updated strategic goals and planning issues, and those include our community outcomes identified in 2021, and you can see the very wordy uh, Thing on the side there, those are our community outcomes. Our first is healthy environment, connected people, vibrant and safe communities and strong economy. Um, we've also updated, uh, well, we have a council's zero carbon promise and that uh, reduces, is all about reducing our carbon footprint, looking after our ecosystems and waterways, focusing on recycling and waste management and proactively planning for the effects of climate change coming our way. So following on from that, we've updated 
objectives and policies in the plan and included some new ones. We want to partner with Mana Whenua to manage reserves network and support the community sports groups as they start to develop sports hubs with the idea being that they can attract new members, offer new programs and share existing facilities and pool resources to make the most of them. There's also actions to respond and adapt to the impacts of climate change on parks and reserves. So things have changed and shifted and we need to be able to adapt. And one of those things to adapt with is commercial activity on our reserves. So in general, reserves provide opportunities for people to enjoy recreational activities away from the commercial environments. From time to time, however, there will be commercial activities that can enhance the use and enjoyment of the reserves for a significant number of our users. For example, a coffee cart or a food operator at a sport event. So council will consider these applications for commercial use for a limited number of specified reserves. So we don't do it across all of our reserves, but some of our um, specified reserves where it can be fit for purpose. So what's new in the Pyre Award? Four new reserves, Ohanamuri Reserve where the John LMP bottle is, Pookie Park where there's access to the river, Rotokohu Sports Grounds and the Pyre Stop Bank Reserve in the middle of town. And also recognition of the role of the Ohanamuri Sports and Recreation Hub. What's new in the Plains Ward? Recognition of the role of the Hurricane Plains Community Sports Hub. And there are many new reserves, most the majority have been inherited from the Franklin area. Uh, just to name a few, uh, Captain Cook Memorial, uh, McDuff's Lane, Parfa Place Reserve, the Tura Boat Ramp. And in Kaiawa, we, we have the Community Centre, which is the ex-bowling club, the Domain, the Esplanade, the Tennis Courts, the Oyster Catcher. Um, we've also got a really important one there, the Ray's Rest. Uh, uh, so there are quite a large number, as I say, uh, inherited from Franklin. In the Waihe Ward, we've got two new reserves. We've got Pukekau Park, which is just um, off Victoria right off Victoria Street, just before the bridge. And we've also got the Tramline Water Race Reserve, which is accessible from the Horaki Rail Trail and runs just along Pukekau Road there. And we're also officially recognising the Sports Hub at Morgan Park. So what's the timeline? E haha te rārangi wā o tēnāi rautaki. So submissions are now open and have been from the 18th of March and they will close on the 20th of May uh, 2022, so not too far away. Uh, this is our second webinar that we've had. Um, so if you see this online uh, through our Facebook channel or our YouTube channel, please spread the word. Um, we want to hear that feedback and get as many um, people participating in that so we can get it right going for the future. So Council will hear that feedback on the 8th of June, and then on the 29th of June, Council will consider these in the final draft. How to provide feedback. So there's, there's a number of ways. You can head to our We Need to Talk webpage. Um, you can email us at info at hodaki-dc.govt.nz. You can print out the forms and post them to us. You can pick up a copy from our office or our libraries, or if you need, just call any one of your councillors or myself at any time and we'll help you out and get those thoughts down on paper for you. We'll provide those through a different channel. So now we're gonna um, go through some questions that we've had emailed through us or been provided to us at some public meetings. Um, and this might just answer some of the questions that you've got burning after hearing this today. So um, this is a good one and I'm gonna uh, throw this at our Deputy Mayor is, what is council doing to encourage youth active recreation? Uh, good question. So at the Railway Reserve, we're looking at doing things like extending the existing skate park or providing a three by three half court basketball facility. It used to be one years ago and there's increasing demand for basketball facilities and that's something that young people are really keen to be involved in. So we'll be working with young people in Rangatahi on these projects. Also working with Sport Waikato to do with funding and supporting the sport and recreation hubs because we know young people like to get involved in sport and do things with their mates. Thanks, Paul. And we've talked about uh, Rangatahi quite a bit. Uh, and I know this is something you're passionate about, Anne-Marie, um, but what is council doing to address facilities for, for our older people? Well, we've already been working on better pathways and footways, footpaths and um, more seating. But we're also really um, looking into adult exercise equipment, um, and that seems to be quite popular. We're looking at a, a site in Pāroa and in, in Waihi, 
um, as per our, our latest long-term plan. And that's going to be pretty exciting, I think. Our halls are also used for classes for older people as well, like Tai Chi, and it's really good to see the halls being used in that way. So there's been a lot of talk um, around the district about um, sport and rec hubs. Um, so what are sport and recreation hubs, Ross Harris? Yeah, thank you, Mia Toby. Uh, sports and recreation hubs are hubs are a mixture of sport and recreation groups who, with council support, work together to achieve the best outcomes for sports and activities. Actually, Mia Toby, um, I've got a question sitting here for you. Are we using environmentally friendly sprays? That okay. is a very good question and something that comes up often uh, in our council chambers um, because we hear it a lot and we've got some passionate councillors that um, the environment is top of their mind. So we're actively always searching for new products that offer both um, correct control uh, and are friendly for the environment. Um, and they're not always uh, the most cheapest. So at some stage, we may have to look at spending more on those um, products to ensure that we're meeting both those those targets. So it is something that we actively look at and the, the sprays that we use, uh, we, we do that in a way that is uh, environmentally as friendly as we possibly can, um, with also providing the, the necessary controls that we need from that um, said product. I know you were um, really active in the, uh, the dog by law process, uh, Deputy Milner, and we've got a question here. How do we get a fenced dog park at um, in Wahi now? Yeah, that's an interesting one. So the right time would have been during that dog bylaw policy, but there's never a wrong time to talk to council about something. So that previous opportunity has been, but that doesn't mean there aren't further opportunities in the future. So if you've got things like that you'd like to see, please let us know and we can find out a way to make things happen. And it might just mean it takes a little bit longer to wait for a bylaw to be updated, but the best time to start changing something is today. Awesome. Anne-Marie, for you, how is council improving biodiversity? Well, the healthy environment is one of our four community outcomes. And in that, we talk about how our ecosystems are protected, restored and respected. And we talk about how our rivers and streams and wetlands are healthy. Um, as far as our reserve management plan goes, we will have a planting program and use eco-source native species in planting where possible. And we're also looking into a, a specific biodiversity strategy, which will identify priority areas for planting and recommend biodiversity improvements. And that would probably be along our drains, along the rail trail, along sort of the walks that we have to. So as you can see, uh, council and our community is very passionate um, about our reserves and we wanna get it right. So please, if you're reading this, seeing this, uh, don't hesitate to, to provide us your feedback ask questions of us. Um, we want, when we make those final decisions, we want to make sure that it's fit for purpose for our community needs for today and obviously for the future. So we thank you for, for taking the time to watch the video. Um, and once again, don't hesitate to make contact with us should you require further information. Uh, Namahi, have a fantastic day uh, and enjoy what's coming ahead in the future. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers.